What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Knights here, and welcome back to Mordhau Masterclass with Kongle, Episode 2. In this guide series, Kongle will be showing a clear path to mastering Mordhau mechanics, tactics, and terminology to help you guys connect the dots. So if you guys missed Episode 1, which will give Kongle a proper introduction, along with following Kongle on Twitch, I will be linking both of those down in the description below. As always, thank you guys so much for dropping by the channel and I hope you guys enjoy the video. I wanted to first go over buffers. Essentially, it's something that you would use when somebody starts to wind up a stab. And what it is, is winding up a stab of your own or technically any swing of yours. The purpose of you doing a stab after somebody else does a stab is because it's going to go one of three main ways. Number one, they're going to follow through with that swing in which case you'll chamber it. Number two, if they decide to faint that swing, they're not only losing the stamina from the faint, but they also now have to either chamber or they have to parry your swing, which makes them lose even more stamina. So on both of those, you're not necessarily winning when you chamber somebody's stab because you are losing more stamina for chambering, but it's very, very difficult to read stab feints. You could say from a certain distance, it's actually impossible. There is no evidence that supports that anybody can 100% read stab feints from a close range. Doing a stab is best whenever anybody stabs just because of that. The third thing that could end up happening is they morph. And if they morph the swing, then you can still just follow through with your swing because then you'll just hit them or you make them have to faint their morph into a parry. Be careful with following through your swing and a morph though. If they do a good excel or have a really fast weapon, they can punish your buffer. Two out of the three ways, you have an advantage and three out of three ways, you will 100% not take a hit from a stab. Something to factor in though, is stab drags. In terms of countering it, you have to look at the angle that they're holding their sword when they first go in for the stab. And sometimes even if they start from a spot where it looks like they'll hit you, they can drag it back out and then bring it right back in. So you kind of have to get used to that. The times when you would want to use buffering outside of stabs is when it's a swing that you personally have problems reading. I know me personally, with specific underhand XLs, it's very hard for me to tell if they're gonna go for a feint or if they're actually gonna XL that swing. Typically, you would just want to buffer with that so that if they do connect with you, you're able to chamber it, and if they don't connect with you, then you have the option to either take some stamina away from them. You may even be able to make them panic parry. Now that you're familiar with buffering, something else that I want to go over that's a little bit different is tempo matching. With tempo matching, you're going to want to use that against players that have slower weapons than you. So essentially, you're just going to be starting your swing the second that they start their swing. You're going to be able to interrupt their swing. A lot of the times people will match with a smaller weapon just because the fact that it's faster so if you wind up your stab the second the other person winds up their stab you have a faster weapon and you aim for whatever is out the most you're gonna hit first whenever i do end up morphing at the same time somebody else ends up morphing a lot of the times forcing clashes is your best way of getting out of situations where it seems like it's almost a gamble in a way so if you match their tempo you do still have a chance of dealing with that morph. I know most players are going to instantly panic at everything and just reach for their one button faint to parry, but that's very bad practice because once you play against somebody that actually knows how to punish your one button faint to parry, you're gonna be shit out of luck because they're just gonna faint you. You're gonna go for the one button faint to parry and they're gonna punish you for it. There's a feint to parry with one button. There's a feint to parry manual. Here's a chamber feint to parry. 
combo feints of parry with manual. And then combo feints of parry without manual. It's important to practice not only those automatic combo feints of parries, but actively deciding to press Q or whatever your feint button is in the middle of your combo when you know somebody is about to take advantage of the fact that they have the initiative now. If you are to miss and then you lead it into a combo and somebody tries to swing between that combo, if you press your feint button and then you wait for their swing to actually come to you and then you parry, that's going to shoot you up. Like you are instantly an elite tier player if you can do manual feint to parry slash manual combo feint to parry. If you always use the one button combo feint to parry, it's a habit that a lot of people get stuck in. Somebody can just feint you when you're going for your combo feint to parry, or they can drag their swing a little bit to the point where you won't be able to feint your combo in time so that you can properly feint your swing into that parry. You'll be stuck in release and then you'll get flinched. scenario your enemy has low stamina and you faint outside of reach that may cause them to run in because a lot of the times when people are losing on stamina they try to go for crazy aggressive plays that nobody's expecting when you do a faint out of range there's a chance that they'll run up thinking it's their initiative now and they can punish you for the swing that you've just done out of range Something that I've been doing, and I've actually gotten a couple really good clips with it, is if I'm actually zero stamina and I run away from somebody, I can make them come after me and they get right up behind me and I know when they're about to swing. And as they're about to swing, I just turn around and kick like that. You'll slowly figure out the best way to get your kicks in whenever you can. I mean, you definitely want to get as many kicks in as you possibly can that are safe. Just because if you do that, you're going to have such a severe stamina advantage because you drain so much per kick. Best times that I find to kick are in between somebody's combo when they're aggressing me. So like if somebody is to miss a swing on me, whether that be on purpose or not on purpose, then I can just punish them with a kick in the middle of their combo with most weapons. Um, there's some weapons that this doesn't apply to, but that's been the most obvious way that I've seen that you can apply kicks to. You can also apply them to other things like the dragging part that we talked about last video, where you run to the side of somebody's drag. If you run this to the side of somebody's drag, you can kick them while you're behind them, and then you're in such an advantageous position because they're going to turn around right after they get kicked. And from there, you could do like a stab morph. They're very likely to fall for that just because they can't do a swing right after they've been kicked. They're only able to do a parry. And we all know now that even at the highest level, we're unable to read 100% of stab feint slash morphs. You can also do like a stab feint to kick if they have a short weapon or they're just somebody who is normally face hugging you just because that's their play style. Not necessarily a good play style, but let's say you got somebody that doesn't understand personal space. Uh, you can do a stab and they're gonna try to parry it or they're gonna try to chamber it. Either way, if you do that stab into a kick, they will get kicked. All right, and that's about all the tips that I have for today. We will have another masterclass out very soon. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.